Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 18. Brought to you by Docker and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at DockerCon 2018 on a beautiful day in San Francisco. We're glad you're not playing hooky though if you're in the city because it's important to be here watching John Troyer and myself, Lisa Martin, talk to some awesome, inspiring guests. We're excited to welcome two Docker captains, that's right, to theCUBE. We've got Nirmal Mehta, you are the Chief Technologist from Booz Allen. Welcome back to theCUBE. And we've got Thank Brett you. Fisher, the author of Docker Mastery. Both of you Docker captains. Well, can't wait yeah. to dig into that. But you're both speakers here at the fifth annual Docker Con. So Brett, let's talk about, you just came off the, off the stage basically, yeah. so thank you for carving out some time for us. <laughs> talk to us about your session. What did you talk about? What was some of the interaction with the attendees? Uh, the, well, the focus is on uh, Docker Swarm, and I'm a, a sysadmin at heart, so I focus on ops more than developer, but I spend my life helping developers get their stuff into production, and so the, the talk centers around um, the challenges of going in and doing real work that's for a business with containers and how do you get uh, what seems like an incredible amount of new stuff into production all at the same time on, on a container ecosystem. So helping them build the tools they need, up in what we call a stack, a stack of tools that ultimately create a full production solution. What was some of the, the commentary that you heard with from attendees in terms of, were, you, were these uh, mostly community members? Were there users of container technology? What was that sort of dynamic like? Well, you, you have, uh, there's all sorts of dynamics, right? I mean, you have startups. I think I took a survey in the room because it was packed and like 20% of the people in the room about were solo DevOps admins. So they were the only person responsible wow. for their infrastructure and their needs are way different than a team that has 20 or 30 people all sharing that responsibility. So the talk was a little bit about how, how do they handle their job and do this stuff, you know, all this latest technology without being overwhelmed and then how does it grow in complexity to a, a larger team and how do they sustain that, so yeah. Brett, it's, it's nice that the technology is mature enough now that people are in production, but what are some of the barriers that people hit when they try to go into production the first time? Yeah, great question. I think the biggest barrier is trying to do too much new at the same time. And I don't know why we keep relearning this lesson in IT, right? We've, been, we've had that problem <laughs> for decades of projects being over cost, over budget, over time, and I think with so much exciting new stuff in containers, it's exceptionally uh, susceptible to that level of, well, we, we need all these new things, well, you actually don't, right? You can actually get by with very small amounts of change incrementally, so we try to teach that pattern of growing over time, and yeah. Do you see that, you, you mentioned like the, you know, the, the one person team versus the multi-team kind of DevOps organization. Is that same problem of boiling the ocean? Do you see that in both groups? Yeah, I mean, you have, you have, uh, you have fundamentally the same needs, the same problems you have to solve, but different levels of complexity is really all it has to do with. And different levels of budget, obviously, right? So usually the solo admin doesn't have the million dollar budget for all the tools and bells and whistles. So they might have to do more on their own, but then they also have less time, so it's a tough, yeah. it's a tough road to hold, you know, uh, to deal with because you've got um, those two different fundamental problems of time and money. And people are usually the most expensive thing. So no matter what the tool is you're trying to buy, it's usually your time that's the most valuable thing. So how do we get more of our time back? And that's really what containers were all about originally, was just getting more of our time back out of it and so that we can put back into the business instead of focusing on the tech itself. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Nirmal, your talk tomorrow is on empathy. Yes. Very provocative. <laughs> Dig into that for us. Sure, so it was actually inspired by uh, a conversation I had with John a couple years ago on the Geek Whisperers podcast, and, and he asked, uh, oh, the folks on that show, and yourself included, asked if there was some, an event in my past that I kind of regret or taught me a lot, and it was about um, basically neglecting someone on my team and just kind of shoving them away, and that moment was a big change in how I felt about the IT industry, and what I had done was pushed someone's, you know, someone who was probably needed that help and, and, and had built up a lot of courage to talk to me and I kind of just dismissed them too quickly. And from there, um, I was thinking more and more about game theory and behavioral economics and seeing a lot of our clients and organizations struggle to go through a, a digital transformation, a DevOps transformation, a cultural transformation. So, so me, culture is kind of the core of, of what's happening in the industry. 
And so the idea of my talk is a little bit of behavioral economics, a little bit of game theory to kind of set the stage for where your IT organization is probably kind of is right now and how to use empathy to get it, get your organization to that DevOps and to a, a, a more efficient place and, and to resolve those conflicts that happen inherently. Um, and, and somehow tie that all together with Docker. So <laughs> that's kind of what my talk is all about. That's nice. I mean, what's interesting to me, Lisa, is that uh, you know, we do a lot of, we do cubes, and there's many cubes actually all across the country during conference season, right? right. And we talk to CEOs and VPs of very large companies. Mm -hmm. And even today at DockerCon, uh, the, cult, the word culture and the talking about culture and, and process and people comes up, came, has come up every single interview. So it's not just from the techies up that this conversation is going, this DevOps and, 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 and empathy conversation is going on. It seems to be from the top down as well. It, that, that everyone seems to recognize that, that if, if you really are going to get this, this productivity gain, it's, it's not just about the tech, you've got to have Absolutely. culture. Absolutely. Uh, a successful transformation of an organization is both grassroots and top down. Can't have, can't have it without either. And I think uh, we inherently want to have a ban like we want to take a pill to solve that problem, and there's lots of pills: Docker or cloud or CI/CD or something. But those are those tools are the foundational safety net for a cultural transformation. That's all that it is. So if you're imp if you're implementing Docker or Jenkins or you know some uh, CI/CD uh, pipeline or automation, that's a safety blanket for allowing for, for providing trust in an organization to allow that change in the culture to happen. And, but you still need that cultural change. Just, just adopting Docker is not going to make you automatically a, a more effective organization. Right. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but it just, <laughs> it's one piece and it's, it's an important piece, but it, you, know, you have to have that top-down understanding of what, where you are now as an organization and where you want to be in the future. And understanding that you know, the, this kind of legacy siloed uh, team mindset is no longer how that, how you can achieve that. You talked about trust earlier from a thematic perspective. That's something that, that comes up. Uh, you know, we, I was at SAP Sapphire last week and trust came up a lot as, as really paramount in the, and that was I think in the context of a, of a, of a vendor customer relationship. But to your point, it's imperative that it's actually uh, coming from within organizations. You know, we talk a lot about, well, a lot of stuff today, multi-cloud. Multi-cloud, silos, but there's also silos of people. Mm -hmm. And without that cultural shift, and probably that empathy, how successful, how big of an impact can a technology make? Are you, are you talking with, uh, Nirmal, with, with folks that are at the, at the executive level as well as at the developer level in, in terms of how they each have a stake and need to contribute to this empathy? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the, the, the talk I'm doing is basically the ammunition a lower level person would need to go up to management and say, you know, this is where the organization is, this is what the IT department kind of looks like, these are the conflicts, and we have to change in order to succeed. And a lot of folks don't, you know, they, they, they see the technology changes that they need, you know, adopting the new JavaScript framework or, you know, the new UX pattern, but they might not have the ammunition to understand you know, the, the business strategy, the, the you know, organizational issues, but they still need that evidence to actually co you know, convince a CTO or a CEO or a COO for the need to change. So I've talked to both groups. Um, from the C-level side, I think it comes from the inherent speed of the industry, you know, the competitive landscape. Those are all the pressures that they see and uh, you know, the disruptions that they're tackling. You know, maybe it's incumbent disruption or new startups that they might have to compete with in the future. The, the need for constant innovation is kind of the driver. And uh, you know, IT is, is kind of where all that is these days. It's great, uh, I mean, building on the concept of trust. Uh, this morning at the keynote, uh, at McKesson, right, they talked about trusting Docker. Trusting Docker the company, trusting Docker the technology. The very, almost the very first words out of uh, Steve Singh's mouth this morning were about community. And I think community is a, one of the big reasons people do trust Docker, and uh, one of the things that brings them along. Uh, you guys are both Docker captains, uh, part of a program, a, a, a advocacy community programs. I don't know, Brett, can you tell us a little bit about the program and, and what's involved in it? Yeah, sure. 
Um, so it's been around a couple, of, over two years now, mm -hmm. and it actually spawned out of Docker's uh, pre-existing programs were focusing on speakers and bloggers and supporting them as well as community leaders that run meetups. And they kind of figured out that a, a key set of people were kind of doing two or three of those things all at once. And so mm -hmm. they were sort of deciding how do we make like super groups of these people and they came up with the term um, Docker captains, which it really just means you know something about Docker, you share it constantly, like mm -hmm. something about a Docker tool set, something about the container tools, and that you're sort of, um, and you don't work for Docker. You're a community person that is, uh, maybe you're working for someone who's a partner of Docker, or maybe you're just a meetup volunteer that also blogs a lot about patterns and practices of Docker or new Docker features. And so uh, they, they kind of use the engineering teams at Docker to kind of pick through people on the internet and what the people they see in the community that are sort of rising out uh, of, the, of the sort of all the noise out there and they uh, ask them to be a part of the program. And then of course we get nice jackets and Schnazzy lots jackets. of training. Yeah, and, and really it's just a great group of people. We're about 70 people now around the world. And yeah, this is global as well, right? Oh yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. It's one of my favorite aspects is the, the international aspect. Uh, I'm, I work for Booz Allen, which is a you know, more US government focused and I don't get to interact with the global community much. Uh, but through the Docker Captain program, you know, got friendships and, and connections almost in every continent, yeah. in a lot of locations. Um, you know, I just saw a post of a, a Docker meetup in like, I think it was like Tunisia or you know, some very, very out there kind of places. There was a Cuban one recently in yeah. Havana. And, and it, it, it's like the best connection to a global community yeah. that I've ever seen. I, I think one of the biggest drivers is the, the rapid you know, adoption and, and kind of uh, industry trend of containerization and the, the Docker brand and, and what it is it basically gave rise to a ton of folks, just beginners, wanting to know what, what it's all about. And uh, we've been identified as, as folks that are approachable and have kind of a mandate to be uh, uh, people that can help answer those initial questions, uh, help uh, align folks that have questions to the right resources, and also just make it like a soft, warm, fuzzy kind of introduction to the yeah. community and yeah. engage uh, on all kinds of levels, you know, advanced right. to, to kind of beginner levels. It, it was interesting, uh, again this morning, uh, the, I think about half the people raised their hands when it was, they said it was uh, the, to the answer, uh, the question, uh, is it their first year? Yes. So it still seems like uh, the Docker, the inbound people interested in Docker are, are it's still growing and uh, millions of developers uh, all over the world, right? I don't know, Brett, you, um, you have a course, uh, yeah. Docker Mastery, you also do meetups, uh, and so I'm curious, like, what is the common pathway or drivers for, for, for new folks coming into, you know, that you see and talk with? Yeah, what's the pathways? Yeah, the pathway, Who, what's driving them? Who, what, are they, what are they trying to do? Are they, yeah. again, are they these solo folks? Are they are Yeah, they so I mean, again, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of a little bit of everything, right? And um, we, uh, we were very lucky in the course, we actually just cr uh, crossed 55,000 students worldwide, 161 countries. Uh, on a course, it's only a year old, so it kind of speaks to the volume of people around the world that really want to learn containers and all the tools around them. I think um, the, the the common theme there is I think we had the early the early adopters, right? And and that was the first three or four years of Docker was people that were Silicon Valley startups, uh, people that were already on the bleeding edge of technology, whether it was hobbyist or enterprise. It was all people, but it was sort of the the Linux people. Now what we're getting is the the true enterprise admins and developers, right? And that means. Uh, you know, Microsoft, more, uh, IBM, mainframes, uh, .NET, Java, you're getting all these sort of traditional enterprise technologies, but they all have the same passion, they're just coming in a few years later. So what's funny is you get to say, you, your meetups don't really change, they're just growing, like we, we see worldwide is the trend is, we're still on the, we're still on the, on the up climb of all the groups, we have over, a, over 200 meetups worldwide now that meet once a month about Docker. It's just, it's a crazy time right now. Yeah. Uh, everything's growing and it's like, when, you wonder if it's ever going to stop, right? Yeah. Like how, how big are we going to get when we, if we're yeah. uh, going to take over the world of containers? Yeah, about 60% or more of all our meetups are completely new to Docker. Um, and it, it ranges from, you know, my boss told me about it, so I got to learn it, or yeah. um, I, I found it and I want to convince other people in my organization to use it, so I need to learn it more so that I can 
make that case, or yeah. it's it's immediately solving a problem, but I don't know how to take it to the next level. Yeah. Don't know where it's going. All that. It's it's a lot of new people. And I get I get stu I get students a lot, college students that want to get uh, have be more aggressive in their mar in the, when they get in the marketplace, and they hear the word DevOps a lot. Yeah. And they think. DevOps is a thing I need to learn in order to get a job. They don't really know what that is, and of course, we don't even, at this point, it's so watered down, I don't know if anyone <laughs> knows what it means. But they, 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 eventually they search that and they come up with sort of key terms, and I think one of those that comes right up right away is Docker, and they don't know what that is, but they, they, I get asked the question a lot, can I, if I take your core, you know, if I go to this workshop or if I go to the meetup or whatever, can I put that on my resume so I can get my first job out of school? Wow, and, interesting. Uh, it's an inter you know, <laughs> they're, they're always looking for something else beyond their schooling to make them their first resume. So it's cool to see even the, uh, the people just stepping into the job uh, market getting their feet wet with Docker, even when they don't even know why they need it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds uh, like a, a symbiotic thought leadership um, community that you guys are part of, and it sounds like momentum we heard this morning in the general session is, is really carried out through the Docker captains in the community. So Nirmal, Brett, thanks so much for stopping by, bringing your snazzy sweatshirts, uh, <laughs> and sharing what you guys are doing as Docker captains. We appreciate your time. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you. you. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with John Troyer. We are live at DockerCon 2018. Stick around, John and I will be right back with our next guest.